Hey guys, Mega Skatterbomb here. Uh, it is time for the Mega Anti Cheat Alpha build. Now, I should stress this isn't the beta like I promised would be ready for part two, and so this video isn't the part two you've been waiting for. That's still in the works. What this is, is this is a an early look for those of you who are interested. So there are two people, or two sorts of people, who'd be most interested in this. There'd be developers who are looking to contribute to the project, and also those of you who are looking just to see what we've done, who are curious. This isn't a complete project. Uh, I'm just going to show you how to install it, compile the source code yourself, and uh, run the anti cheat. So you're going to need a few things. You're going to need Git for Windows. Um, this does support Linux, and Linux already has Git, typically, so only Windows users have to install this. Uh, there's the Rust. This is the programming language used for the uh, client. Uh, just get the 64-bit install executable and install with default settings. Uh, you'll get a bunch of prompts for a number. If you just pick a one for all of them, you'll be good. And just pr proceed with the install there. And you'll also need Node.js. Uh, just get the long-term service build and install with all the default settings and you'll be good to go. Now that you've got everything downloaded, how on earth do you actually install this thing? Let's go, let's, let's create a new folder somewhere where we can store the project. So I'm going to go to documents. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do shift right click and I'm going to open a terminal. If you're on Linux, I assume you know what you're doing because you're a Linux user. Okay, and we're going to type git. If we have git installed correctly, there we go. That should work. And we're going to go to, this is the git repository for the mega anti cheat client. I'm going to copy the URL and we're going to do git clone and then we're going to control V paste the URL in there and then we're going to hit enter and so what this will do it will copy all the code from this git repository into here you can see we're in here so we're going to go back to our terminal we're going to do cd client backend now we're in the client backend folder. You can see if I do a command like ls, it lists all the files in there. You can see they're the same files that are in here. Okay, so the next step, you might notice these include UI things. So the backend repository just contains the backend, you know, the logic, the stuff that interacts with the, the central server and whatnot. There's no actual f UI, user interface, built into this. But we can get that sorted easily. So we're gonna do uh, dot slash include UI dot bat. Uh, the sh is for Linux users. The bat is for Windows users. I'm just going to run that. And so what that's going to do is there's another repository, which I can show you. Uh, Mega anti cheat UI, and this is where the UI is stored. And so what this is does is it automatically pulls the latest UI and puts it in our client backend. All right, now the UI has been included. Uh, you might get a bunch of errors like this. Um, that's just it failing to clean up some backend stuff that will be fixed at some point, but it doesn't affect your ability to use the program. So now we're almost ready to run this. We just need to configure a few things with Steam itself. So. Here's my account, test account, please ignore. I don't know why it censored the word account, but whatever. I'm going to go to Team Fortress 2, properties. And uh, you'll want these launch options here. Ignore the insecure, that's just for, for my own testing on other things. I'll let you speculate about that in your own time. Uh, we've got uh, these four launch options here. So what they do is they allow us to read the console, uh, send console commands to the client and also get additional debugging information. That's what the G15 one is for. So we want to make sure these four are in your launch options. And then, we, then we're going to go to installed files, browse. Here we go. And that will bring up a uh, explorer window for you. Then you want to go to TF. You want to go to CFG. And you want to either create autoexec.cfg or you want to... Uh, edit it if it exists already. So you can just edit it in Notepad that comes with all Windows things. Now there's something very important that's caught a few people out. 
in my Discord server already. If you go to properties, not this, uh, options, here we go. Uh, we go to view. Notice how I have hide extensions for known file types unchecked. So that means I always see the file extension. If I if you have this checked, which it is by default, then when you create the autoexec.cfg, it might actually be created as a .txt, but see these text files down here? They don't have .txt, and so you wouldn't see. So pe some people have created an autoexec.cfg.txt by mistake and not realize that because they don't display all their file extensions. So that's something to watch out for because if you make it as a .txt by mistake, it won't work. Anyway, we're gonna once you've created that file, we're gonna edit it in Notepad, and you'll want to have these three lines in this order. So uh, the most important line is this one here. Uh, you can make this password whatever you want. Uh, you just have to know it. It's not a major security flaw if this gets out because um, all this allows people to do is uh, run console commands in your TF2 client. And in order for that to happen, they'd have to know your IP address and you'd also have to have the Archon port opened on your router. So if, you, if you're one of those people, you probably already know what you're doing. But in general, don't share this with anyone. It's probably not a good idea. Okay. So now you've got the launch options, you've got the these lines in your auto exec, and you're ready to go. We're gonna go back to our terminal here, and we're gonna just do cargo run. So this will compile and run the code. The first time you run this, it's gonna download and compile a whole bunch of stuff, but on subsequent runs, it will go a lot faster. All right, you can see it's running now. We've got a couple of warnings because um, it didn't find any config files or any like, settings or whatever. So it's just creating them for us. Uh, it's identified our launch things. It's identified our Steam ID. It started the web interface at this URL. We'll copy that for later. You'll see a bunch of errors. This is the anti-cheat trying to connect to the game. However, the game isn't running, so it can't connect to it. So these errors are expected anytime you start it and the game isn't running. All right, now we want to go up here and that URL we pasted in from earlier, uh, 127.001.3621, the colon there. We're going to press enter and this is what will appear. So it looks like this is the first time using Mega Anti-Cheat. Let's get everything ready for use. So the Archon password, I made a test password. So I'm going to put that there. Now the Steam API key, you want to make sure you never share this with anyone. But uh, to get one of those, you want to go to this site, steamcommunity.com slash dev slash API key. I'm going to press enter. Uh, it's asking us to sign in, so I'm going to do this. Okay, it seems my alt account is too new, so <laughs> I can't actually get an API key. So I'm just going to use the one from my main account. Basically, what will happen, editor, remember to censor this, you'll be asked to put in a domain name. That can be literally anything. Um, it does not matter at all. And then this is the super secret thing. You do not want to share with anyone. They will be able to access and do shit with your Steam account and maybe steal your items and whatnot. Never share that with anyone, ever. And you want to paste it in right there. Okay, now this doesn't get uploaded anywhere, so you're not going to get hacked or something. You can verify that yourself by looking at the source code if you're uh, concerned about that but once you paste in steam api key and the archon password as you see it here good to go press save final thing you need to do now is boot the game all right we're in the game and i got all the stockings and noisemakers and stuff god damn all right let's i'll tab out give it a second here we go we're back in the anti-cheat window and you can see these errors stopped, and we got a Archon connected. There you go. We are up and running now. All right. Since my alt account uh, could not create an API key, I'm going to switch over to my main account now. So I'm going to jump into TF2 on my main, and we're going to go into Casual. We're going to queue for that. And while we queue for that, uh, let's open the 
web interface. Here we go. And we found a game, so let's go back in. And I'm using the client through a web browser, but you don't have to use it through a web browser. Not all of you have multiple monitors. You can also use it through the Steam overlay. So I'm going to do that once we load into this game and we'll be able to see what's going on. Oh. Alright, we're in the game. Let's shift tab and uh, let's go to... <coughs> go to localhost 3621. It's the default port number. Boom, here we go. Alright. Saw you behind it. I died immediately. Typical. Now, if I thought this guy was a cheater, Blash Scotty, what I'd do is I'd come in here and find his name and I'd set him to be a cheater. However, I know he's not a cheater, so I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, there's also separate things for bots, uh, suspicious, and trusted players. Um, and if a player disconnects, their name will be greyed out for a bit. And so you'll have a better time to respond, but even if you miss that, you can go into the player history tab. This isn't fully functional yet, once you close it down this gets wiped, so uh, it still needs to be improved upon. Uh, and then finally in preferences you can adjust the colours of various things, so you can adjust the colour that you appear, you can adjust the colour of convicts, uh, basically convict when the anti-cheat is up and running fully and we find someone who we know for sure is cheating and we've got all the demos and that and everyone knows they're a cheater, that's what they'll appear as, a convict. Cheater, that's for people you've marked as a cheater. Bot, that's for people you've marked as a bot. Suspicious, you can mark people as suspicious. Trusted, you can mark people you trust. Especially if they're being impersonated or something. Then finally, if you've got friends, they'll be highlighted a darker green. If you got a friend of if someone's a friend of a cheater in the same game, then they'll be highlighted as white and there'll also be a special icon for that. And then you can also change your Steam API key or password if you need to. And then there's also a setting to adjust how often the friends lists are pulled. So right now, it defaults to cheaters, because the only information I care about is whether there's friends of cheaters in the same game. However, if you want to set it to all, maybe there's a feature in the future that will require all of them, then you can change it there, but that's not required. Alright. Now I'm going to show you how to update it. We're going to be rolling out features quite frequently, so I'm going to show you how to update the anti-cheat if you so desire. Now, let's say the anti-cheat gets updated and you want to update your copy of it. So there's two ways of doing this, If the depending on what gets updated. If the client backend gets updated, then you want to do git pull. You can see I'm already up to date. And if the UI gets updated, you want to run this UI script again. Again, dos sh for Linux and dot bat for Windows. <coughs> That's all you guys really need to know. Just keep in mind this is an alpha. Uh, if you have trouble, there is a support channel in my Discord server. So the same instructions are written here, if you prefer written format. Uh, it's pinned in the Mac support channel. And um, if you have questions or you're having issues, then you can ask here. I hope you guys uh, enjoy using it. Right now, it may just be the good old uh, PASER functionality that you're used to. But hopefully we get good feedback from you guys on what you like and what you don't like and we can improve on those points before. So yeah, that's the end cheat uh, right now, or at least the client. We're working on the server side stuff at the moment and that's where the cool stuff with demos and scanning them for cheaters will come in. Uh, the beta will be when the d actual demo uploading is done and that's when the part two video will come out and that's when things will start to get really exciting. Until then, um, I guess just have fun toying around with it, send in your feedback, and if you feel like contributing, it's open source, so you can make all the pull requests you want. That's all from me for now. I'm going to let you guys try this out for yourselves. Uh, join the Discord. Uh, goodbye for now. I'll see you in part two.